I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I'm here to talk about Arduino. I'm um, Philip Howard. You may know me online as Gabs Toys. Um, generally speaking, and I also have a blog which I um, like for Raspberry Pi related things on. Uh, I'm here to talk about Arduino because I think it's the essential companion to a Raspberry Pi, and I think you shouldn't have a Raspberry Pi without having an Arduino. And more because Raspberry Pi has appeared on the scene. Arduino has been there before; they've been around. They've been doing similar things, obviously not identical because they haven't got the full desktop computer experience, but they've made microprocessors accessible to people. They've made them easy to pick up and play and hack around with. And um, while you can build out something a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like you feel me? That's your brain, it's very Well, you can build something out a little bit like that, which is a microprocessor sitting on a little 170 point breadboard with a couple of wires and a crystal oscillator and an MD and some other bits and bobs. It's not exactly pretty and it's not exactly accessible, even though it's quite easy to get the kit together and make. Um, I don't actually have an Arduino board with me at the moment to show you what the difference is, but uh, basically Arduino is those pro components on a board in a neat little package. I've got a trinket actually. I'll tell a lie. Oh, no, it's dead. There we go. There's no way I'm going to be able to point this out. So. The trinket is that it's little tiny easy. sort of thumb-sized board that isn't thumb-sized, it's on a 50 foot high screen, but uh, <laughs> that's sitting on that 170 point breadboard, and that's basically everything you saw before built on that breadboard into a, a little small form factor that's um, easy to use, easy to plug onto a breadboard, easy to get started with. And the reason why you should have one of these in addition to a Raspberry Pi is because simply put, you can do things that the Pi can't. The Pi, no. <laughs> The Pi has got GPIO, it's got 26 GPIO ports, it can turn things on and off, and it can signal whether it will do hickeys and do dads. Um, but it can't do something that we tend to call real time, where basically rather than processing a whole number of things simultaneously and, and having a lot of code that handles exactly how those things are done in order and how those things are processed on the processor, the microprocessor, basically does one thing at one time for the most part. Um, and that means that if you're doing something that's very timing sensitive, like driving these lovely flashy lights, which require a very high speed, very time sensitive protocol, if you're doing something like that and you're using a Pi, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna work. The best you'll get out of it is maybe some random color variation flashing or something, but if you use a, a trinket and connect that through the Pi, then you can do this which the Pi cannot. And similarly, you can also do proper PWM, which is um, pulse width modulation, basically turning a pin on and off very high speed at a very specific frequency, which is useful if you're doing stuff that requires that, but by and large, probably won't be. Uh, the other reason for picking up an Arduino is because this model of having a brain like the Raspberry Pi at the hub of your construction and things like Arduino's and other microprocessors doing small, discrete tasks and doing them well and doing them specifically is quite a common model found in machines today. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi, you might have 10 Arduinos surrounding it and they can all be doing various different things. If your Raspberry Pi turns off, they can all carry on doing those various different things. When the Pi comes back on, they can say, Pi, I've been doing this job for the last hour. Have you been uh, and report back and catch up and make sure everything goes as planned. And that means you can build a very massively decentralized sort of system or robot where all the limbs, for example, this is common in robot building practices, are separately controlled. So you have a controller in your arm joint, for example, that will handle that one thing. It will know exactly how far it needs to move to get to a certain position. It will know where it is at any given time. Um, it, it, basically then reports that information back to the Pi, for example. Uh, it gives you the ability to do a lot uh, autonomously uh, without the Pi having to get involved and without the Pi's weaknesses having to get involved. 
and obviously the weakness of the fly is it doesn't do real time, so it's trying to gain signal feedback from where an arm position is and act intelligently on that, then the fly might not be able to respond fast enough. So if you've got a machine that's doing some heavy, dangerous lifting work, and it's got a heavy load, and it's moving about, and it goes into a threshold whereby something bad's going to happen, it's going to run someone over or crash into something. The microprocessor can detect a signal from something close by, immediately feedback that something wrong, stop it dead in its tracks before the Raspberry Pi even has a chance to know that that's happened. So basically, building systems and control systems involves your central frame and involves your hardware and microprocessors. And a lot of you probably aren't going to build massively central control systems like this anyway. But the skills that you'll learn from programming in an Arduino, for example, will be the skills that you'll need to start doing that sort of in, in a profession, I think. So, yeah, pick up an Arduino, learn to play with it. I've been working um, quite hard recently on some tutorials specifically focused around the trinket, which um, basically gives you a whole bunch of software and libraries all ready to go, all ready to... Um, yeah. Trinket up and running, doing things like this, which is the um, Trinket NeoPixel driver. They're kind of sitting around on the internet at the moment in a, a GitHub repository, which I can give you access to if you need to, but it's, it's not officially live and published yet. Yes. <coughs> Would you like to add that the good thing about um, Arduino and at Mega Chips is that um, you actually have proper analog support? Oh, very good point, indeed, yeah. Um, analog output on a Raspberry Pi. Um, Sorry, was some. Apologies, I was going to ask you to repeat what you said because I didn't hear, but then it sounded like you were doing that anyway. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay. <laughs> analog, analog output on a Raspberry Pi isn't necessarily analog output. You've got the um, audio connector, and I think there's. What's there an analog pin on the Raspberry Pi? There's one hardware, and then the rest yeah. of the software is still. I wonder what you can do about that. Um, real analog output is basically a system which turns your digital signal into a variable voltage, and the Raspberry Pi doesn't do that very well. It can't output a variable voltage on a pin. It can simulate one by turning the pin off very quickly, which is what PWM is, um, but it can't generate a, an analog output, whereas, or, or it can't read analog input either for that matter, whereas uh, an Arduino or something like that has a set number of analog inputs and outputs, and you'll need those, because when reading something like a temperature sensor, for example, you can't read a temperature sensor, for the most part, without an analog input, because you need to be able to read the variable voltage coming out of that temperature sensor uh, to figure out what temperature it's reading. It's effectively a variable resistor. And the same with a light sensor. If you plug a light sensor onto your pile, you need a bunch of supporting hardware to make it do its job. And the idea is a very nice way to do that, because it's one single piece of kit that you can buy, and you can... <laughs> You can, oh. you can pick up. <laughs> Come on, wake up. There we go. Where, where is it? You can pick up the kit of parts to produce this little breadboard microprocessor for around five pounds. So compare that to buying a separate analog signal converter and buying digital doohickeys and various other input and output devices, or even any of the prototype plates or shields you might put on your Pi. Compare the price of those. <coughs> Not to um, sort of rain on anyone's parade, it's the same as things, of course, but compare the price of those to just a simple kit of parts to give you an Arduino and compare the feature sets. The Arduino is completely self contained, completely autonomous. You can take it away from the Pi, and whatever you've programmed it to do, it will continue to do that because it doesn't need the Pi to tell you what to do. It can do stuff itself. Um, compare that to pretty much any other add on board, and they can't do that. They can translate the Pi but they can't do things of their own accord, and they don't generally have the breadth and depth of input and output that Arduino will have on it. So, although an Arduino at sort of five pounds for a basic kit of parts, right the way up to 40, 50 pounds for a really full feature one, sounds like an expensive thing. It's actually quite cost competitive in theory because it does all this extra stuff that you can play with um, using conjunction with the pie if you want to, or not. Do you want me to go fetch my one? Just yeah, the, 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 the um, Leonardo, no, not the Leonardo, the Geo. Uh, okay. I've got the Mega 2 as well. I've got the Leonardo out there. The Mega and the Geo are identical. The Mega and the Geo. The Mega and the Geo are the same layout. The Mega. It's confusing. One's one down here, one's one down here.
Um, right, I'm just really rude and actually passing. One, one, one of the other things I like a lot about the Arduinos is their relative indestructibility. <laughs> yeah, he knows exactly point, yeah. where I'm going. We've all I played. haven't managed to break one of these yet. I've done some heinous, horrible things with it. Plugging onto a breadboard like that with no, no protective sofa at all. This, this thing is basically just a chip, a crystal oscillator, power and ground. It has nothing else. It doesn't have any uh, capacitor to smooth out any voltage or anything <coughs> like that. They are remarkably yeah. robust, which cannot be said for the pies I own. <laughs> yeah, and that totally agree with as well. Of course, a single, a single one of those will cost you a few quid as well. And I've just started Arduino in the last few uh, months, and they are just so simple to use. Yeah, yeah but I don't know if holding this under here will work, so I might just <laughs> set up by holding it. Oh, I think it's because it's dark, so okay, it's watch out. Upside down. <laughs> it should be pointed out that this is one of one of the really big. Yeah, this, this is, is one of the, this more, is the big and more expensive. About fifty pounds, isn't it? It's quite yeah, I can't believe they've wrapped twenty. Yeah, it's, <coughs> <really good> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's official, uh, and that's another thing. Um, there, because Arduino is open source, um, it, everything's available. All of the schematics are available free on the internet. So as Phil's done, you can make your own you one. Make or this, you can buy. Yeah. The, yeah. The shelf, sort of. There's a load of Chinese clones and. Mm -hmm. um, What's the company? Smart Fun, they, they do. Sound Smart. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Sound Smart, I've got quite a lot of their kit, actually. Yeah, and they're all good. And the good thing is they, they managed oh. to all keep it, the, um, all of the shields as compatible as possible. So, yeah, basically that little black square in the middle, that's the microprocessor. Everything else on here is basically just the support components you need on a, a slightly less crazily built Arduino. So they're all the protective circuitry that more or less prevent you from blowing it up. Um, I don't know if you can see the individual pins, but right on the end here where my thumb is, is a connector that's actually bigger than that on the Raspberry Pi, and that's just the thing on the end. There's two whole banks of connectors down each side as well. So yeah. mixture digital and analog voltage at both 3.3 volts and 5 volts. Uh, yeah, bang for your buck, basically. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And there's a lovely barrel connector that can there too. Yeah. yeah. And USB B. And low power, so you can uh, power them from batteries for a long time. For a long time, yeah. And there's also um, their, their newest flagship model is the Arduino Leonardo, and that one uses micro USB instead of um, yeah. USB B. Yeah. Compatible with your Pi cable. Yeah. And for just a really confused matter, it's even more than the Arduino. <laughs> Dewey, or Arduino 2, which is actually an ARM-based one. Yeah. And then, of course, because people want to confuse it even more, there's the Arduino Tray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, that's an interesting little beast. That's an 86-based one, isn't it? Oh, so no, 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 that's, that's the other other one. Yeah, that's another, another one that's gone <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I uh, hope you're all taking notes. There will be questions <laughs> like There's two in, in Tibet, or just released, there's the Arduino Tray, and then there's in Galileo. Galileo, that's the one. Galileo is based on an Intel processor, um, x86. I throw another rather large spanner into the works. There's also the um, single board field programmable gate arrays you can get, and I'm not going to try and explain that concept right now because it will break my brain and yours. <laughs> but um, in, the, in the simplest, quickest possible way, it's programmable hardware, and you can write code that will change physically the layout of hardware by making connections using electricity and wizardry and magic. Um, and you can pick one of those up and you can program it and say you're an Arduino. And it will become an Arduino for all intents and purposes. And you can use it like an Arduino. Or you can say you're a signal processor for a telecom community, or communications, for example, and it will become that. So if you want to step up from programmable, software programmable microcontrollers and actually start physically affecting the hardware and designing layouts and approaching problems from a hardware perspective rather than a software perspective, you can do that in a similar way to the, the Arduino. And the one I use is the Papillion one, which is really nice that you can show that last time. Oh, for, for also to add the Arduino Tray is a weird mashup. It's yeah. It's the bizarre result of a horrendous collision between <laughs> a, a Beagle phone bike and an, and an <coughs> Arduino. 
which is an interesting combination. Um, we can flip that around, you can get the GERD do we know, as hey, let's try and get this back to the Pi line. The GERD do we know is an Arduino that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi, so you can have your cake and eat it, but it being GERD, it has two very <laughs> interesting features. One, it's very pluggable, and two, it's, actually, it's not just one Arduino, it's actually two. It's got a standard Arduino like the ones up here, and it's got a tiny little baby one on the same board, conveniently with a battery to power it, which offers some interesting options. So there's, I think for some of this, we've completely stolen your There's a YouTube board as well, of course. Yeah, I've got one of those. Basically, it is effectively a beefed up Raspberry Pi coupled with um, an Arduino Duo. So 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 a big away with Blackbird, pretty much. That's a Pi with a, a 46, I think, <laughs> GPIO, which is crazy amount. Yeah. Then of course you've got a panda ball, wouldn't we? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry. The Raspberry Pi is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Yes, yeah. The Raspberry Pi is, is one is the cheapest one that will run a desktop. The Arduinos are also cheap and are very, very robust. That's I think the key. I think yeah, they the won't run a desktop. They yeah. are just the um, You say that. For the large part, they don't run desktops, and they're more kind of you're going to need a computer to actually use it. So, but it, it, you don't need a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, you can download the Arduino um, programming need. environment. Yeah, but, but do add at this point we that should. we've completely undermined everything that we say about why the Pi is good. And you don't need a laptop or a computer for the Pi. Fair enough, but the other argument is that you don't, you can't do anything on a computer. You can't do GPIO on a computer, which is blatantly false. You can plug an Arduino straight into the computer with a USB cable. You can talk to it via you are, and you can say, Arduino, do this from your desktop computer. It will do it. It's not portable, like you have a primary to an Arduino, like the Raspberry Kit out there, for example. Mm -hmm. That's got a um, the Pi is controlling the Arduino. The Arduino is a separate, um, totally separate board because it's using. Uh, uh, radio to communicate to, do, to the two. And you've got beautiful marriage between the two, something that's controlled and something, something powerful that's controlling something that's pretty simple. I think the thing you've got to remember here is Arduinos are physical computers. Yeah. They're meant to interact physically with computers and measuring things, taking measurements and stuff like that. Whereas what the Raspberry Pi is really being used for is looking at the information that that's actually providing. So you've got a very strong desktop environment a very good physical environment in the Arduino, so they have, the marriage of it is really, really good. Yeah. I think a use case that will probably be appealing to the average hobbyist perhaps would be to have your Raspberry Pis of central brain, have some sort of wireless solution on there, and then to have a cloud of Arduino powered robots, for example. The Raspberry Pi would simultaneously control all these Arduino powered robots from quad <coughs> which yes. Yeah, so is that the Internet of Things? It yeah. is effectively a small Internet of Things, so your own personal <coughs> robot army controlled by the Raspberry Pi. So it's, it's something you could do. You can create a completely self contained robot, completely autonomous. It could sense when it hits a wall and it could reverse and drive back. But it could also relay its position and telemetry back to the Raspberry Pi, which could give it overreaching commands to tell it where to go. So it's the, just the idea of, from a robotics and control perspective of having a brain out there on the field that's separate to the one in the Raspberry Pi that can make its own decisions and make, it, make its own choices. Um, and they're really not hard to program either. There's so much information out there. You think how much information there is for the Pi. The Arduino has been around for a little longer. It's got a bit of a mature sort of user base, tons of examples. The code is portable across all of our and the platform, yes. Um, and I'm just going to throw in that, um, that there are currently boards out there like uh, uh, like the Makey Makey, um, which take physical computing um, to another more personal level, and that is using everyday objects as keys. So all you have to do is, um, say, plug the Makey Makey, which just works as uh, like a keyboard, um, plug it in USB, shouldn't have any drive problems, and then all you have to do is plug um, alligator clips into objects that conduct electricity, and all you need to do is complete a full circuit. So you could be holding one end of it, and then have the other end plugged into a banana, and every time you press the, press the banana, 
and that completes the circuit and then you can say you can make a, a game controlled with bananas <laughs> or banana controlled robots. Calm. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> for the next round, is calm. There is one <coughs> limitation possibly is the language you use. Yeah. Because I don't think you can use Scratch so easily. For you can you in can. theory, but that basically involves installing a pre-written program on the Arduino and then a pre-written program on your computer that proxies your connection between the Arduino and Scratch. Mm -hmm. And then you tell Scratch to talk to the program that then talks to the Arduino. And that sort of removes a lot of the sort of complexity. There's a modified version of Scratch now for Arduino. Oh, Modkit. Yeah, I've heard about this. Uh, it, it's in its early stages. It does work quite well, but it's nowhere near as flexible. Does it file. actually compile to? Um, uh, yeah, it goes down to update code on that. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Fair enough. So you could you could start off with your Pi stuff doing Scratch and what have you, and move on to mm -hmm. the Arduino stuff. And then if you're going to program in something like C on the Arduino, <coughs> you can then transfer that back to the Pi if you want. If you want to run, so I, it, you can't go wrong with really. it. It just sit so well together. But why why is there a limitation you can't use Python in the in, uh, in Arduino? Because that would make it much easier for education. Would. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, I can do that. It's basically because you think about the Raspberry Pi, it's got bump and twelve megs of RAM. The Arduino has got the top of the range one has got thirty two K. No, two five six K. Oh okay, that oh yeah, the two five six K the left one five six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, depending on which model, it's got 256K, 32K, or 8K, or 4K, various variants. Or 2K. Yeah. Much, no, or mm -hmm. multiple orders of magnitude less memory. Massively, and that's the key in your head. And so, and so, so, could, so you're saying in the future that could be possible, that you could have in schools, you could do the same Python through that? Well, you can, uh, another way that the Pi complements the Arduino is that you can write Python programs that into on the Pi that interface with the Arduino without um, needing to touch C++ that much. However, just because of the lack of um, RAM on the Arduino, if you wanted to increase the RAM, then you go you have to start looking at more expensive prices and um, different microprocessors. I think the fundamental difference is an Arduino is a microcontroller. Yes, yeah. there to do one thing. It's not a microprocessor. It's yeah. microcontroller. So there is a slight difference. You tell it what to do, and it does that one thing, and it does it very well in the real time. <coughs> you program it generally in C. And to be honest, I don't think there's a lot of migration from Python to C or C++. I don't think that that's a lot of hard work. And they used to teach C and C++ in pre-college. Certainly when I was in school, it was a long time ago. It's not, not what the examination <laughs> boards want, though, is it? No, yeah, well, most examination boards just want a project. They want some type of project where how you deliver that, whether it's in C, Python, Scratch, or whatever, is the end result of what you've tried to design and achieve. And like you say, Arduino is a very good at hobbyists, and that's what we should be encouraging our young children to do, is experiment, get into the more detailed workings of it, but don't have them at a massive <coughs> high level. The underwriting for you is don't see the Raspberry Pi as a magic bullet. Kind of look at what else is out there, try what else is out there, see how it interacts with the Raspberry Pi, but don't just stay with the Raspberry Pi and, and not explore anything else. Because it's those other things that are going to teach you skills that will be useful and applicable. It's actually, yeah, the, the, the Pi is just part of a very broad spectrum. And there's lots of overlaps and all sorts of fun things. Um, at least you're not going to program the Arduino in assembly language, I think it's self modding. <laughs> Back in the day, it's what we used to have to do. I think the other thing as well is you can buy stuff for the Arduino from the breakout boards, and as long as you know what you're doing, you can use those same boards with the Pi and the GPS stuff. You've just got to make sure your budget levels are there. Yeah. Correct. So you're not wasting your money if you're buying stuff for Arduino as well. Uh, that's why I'm actually quite a fan of the wireless inventors kit that's out there, because that not only gives you the Arduino controllable from the Pi in, in, in Python, but actually gives you the wireless link. You've got a, a physical air gap that you can quite a distance away. Yeah, it could be up to 50 miles depending on the yeah. yeah. That's a really neat stuff.
Sorry, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> we just decided to have a group discussion. Unless there are any questions, I don't think group discussions are great. They seem to happen every time we give a presentation. No, oh, it's good, it's good. I think, I think that's important. Yeah. We, we yeah. 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 There's, There's a lot of people out right. here that know more than I do. So, well, that's the point. Um, I was just going to ask, so if you, if you vaguely know what you're doing with a, with a pie, and you, you, you quite fancy to give it a go, where do you start? Is, is yeah, do you like Arduino you know, a good place to start? Or? Um, a good place to start would be the Arduino website itself. It was really basic. So what, would you, what, do you, what do you want to buy? Well, what, what kit oh, would you kit yeah. want to buy? I have a video for that. Uh, <laughs> I'll start with a link now. Or a Leonardo. Leonardo is yeah. um, <coughs> one or the other. It's a slightly more modern version, got a bit more memory, I think it is. And, what um, I want to do, though, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You can buy them for about eleven pounds. Yeah, you just buy one of the small ones. Even the Arduino Nano, um, that's got what ten digital outputs, so you can flash ten and do the time. The SPI on it. Yeah, I'm using to control the. So the, um, the the Leonardo actually does a very nice thing with USB, where it can appear as a mouse or a keyboard with the USB hit device. So you can connect it up to the Pi or to your computer, for example and make it behave in some way like a mouse or a keyboard or a gamepad. So yeah, that's nice. Quite idea. a nice bonus way to do the, that interface. I've got that side as well. But I would say the very best way to start, which is the way that I started, would be to buy one of those little processors and then stick it on a breadboard, look up the documentation for where things happen and what pin does what, and wire it up yourself. Um, and you'll learn a lot more about what it is, what it does, and what hardware you need, what hardware you don't. Mm -hmm. By doing that, and you're by buying an off-the-shelf Arduino. And once you're comfortable with programming that, which is um, actually remarkably simple from a Raspberry Pi, I've been doing a lot of work for the Pi, writing programs that will help you program a little breadboard thing like that directly from your Raspberry Pi. So you literally just plug three or four wires into your Raspberry Pi, plug them over into that, and you can run in a single command a compiler that will compile your code up to run on that board from your Raspberry Pi. So it's a very, very simple and easy way to do it. Thank you. you just explain what, what those two boards are. I haven't, I haven't used those boards before. You might do Which one? describe. Um, it's but two boards connected to the Pi, right? <laughs> I looked at it. I was just curious what, what, what they do. You're talking about this here. Yeah. This is. Um, you put the small one on the breadboard. Looks like a small board. Um, and the, the little one on the breadboard is the Adafruit Trinket, I remember. Yeah. And then this one is um, one of Alex's proto plates that I've literally just soldered um, an 80 mega onto myself. Um, with the heads and stuff, so it's a kit all the way And now I have to finish or I'll be hung. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the channel. Thank you.